Hey, welcome back to what must be the oh, it's the tenth or eleventh episode. I think tenth episode of the US Capri series. Um, so, if you remember the last video, we had a quick look at the brakes. Realised that they're um, a bit knackered. Well, not knackered, but they need rebuilding. Now, the owner wants me to sort that out, so we're going to strip it down and get it sorted out in a minute. We're also hopefully going to get the bonnet back on and a few bits tied up, get the cooling system finished for us, and new antifreeze put in, and should be almost done. So yeah, we'll crack on with that in a minute and see where we get to. Okay, well I've removed the pads from the calipers and what I've done is the, I've packed some cardboard in there in replacement for the pads and then pumped the brakes to release the pistons a bit. At least it'll make it a lot easier to remove the dust boots and the pistons when I take the caliper off in a minute as opposed to being fully stuck in. Um, not so much luck on this side though pumping a pedal and these pistons will not move so that's going to be a nightmare not ideal so I'm going to do the other side first the easier side and then worry about this afterwards so if I come across any nasty surprises on the other side then I won't do this side and we'll have to get parts for it so yeah crack on with that in a minute and I'll see you shortly okay so here's the caliper off and um, I think this here would probably explain it um, as you might better see just a little bit the piston is not in the best way, to put it politely. So when you get these pistons out, um, see if they're saveable. There's also doing some beating in there before, to be fair as well. Hmm. Yeah, see if they're saveable, and then go from there, really. So we'll pop them out in a minute and see what happens. Well, I think it's pretty obvious now. Um, <laughs> it wasn't. In oh God wasn't in great shape in there um, same with the pistons they're um, rather tired but we'll clean them up and see see what we get out of that then really because yeah seals don't look too bad though so ideally I'd change them but we haven't got any replacements and the owner just wanted to pop pistons out so we'll just see okay so that's this one here reassembled now um, it's not perfect. The boots aren't well; they're okay, and the seals are actually the seals are pretty good inside, but the boots aren't great. Um, and these pistons, at least one of them, has a bit too much corrosion really around the top where it's been exposed and rotting for a while. Um, to probably be reliable again in the future, it's going to happen again, I'm sure. But they should now be working fine. They're now free. They go in and out as I meant to, um, all greased up, and yeah. So we'll get this one back on the car. And then we we'll move over to the other side, and that's going to be an absolute pig. <laughs> so I'll see you then. <laughs> I sometimes wonder why I take on these jobs. <laughs> so I got that piston out on that side there, um, just by well, in the end, I done the old trick where you got the airline. Uh, there it is. Bit of rubber on the end of a blowgun. Stuff it down in there, and pump 150 psi in, uh, and that. We're maybe a bit of a wig on the piston if it's really stuck because normally does the job. But unless both pistons are equally stuck or both similar, then you're only going to one them out that way. Um, I was planning on holding one back in and locking it in place so then I can work on the other one and put air in it, but it didn't work, it just exploded out anyway. So I've got one piston out. I'm currently working on the other one, which has been an absolute pig, but it's slowly starting to bleed out there. Um, I've been using this Mano M40 lubricant, which is a, also yeah, more than just a WD. It's a penetrant and all sorts. And it seems to be working. So every time I spray it in there, I get a bit more rust bleeding out. Um, as I'm giving it a good old tap and that, and gently getting it. I've got it out this far so far. Um, the dust boot on this one's really knackered, which is a pain in the ass. But still, a state of it in there. It's all just no. You can't really see, can you? Um, God. state of it it's just uh, no you can't really tell it's the crap coming out of these calipers it's kind of a good job they are getting flushed out actually because they weren't nice right I'm going to keep swearing at this one piston he will come out he is moving um, he does now turn with the grips as well I think so it's just a matter of trying to get him out knock him out gently evenly each side yeah does turn so I will better get him out 
but it's just going to take a bit more patience. We'll crack on. Well, that was not fun. It's out now. Um, state of it. That was not fun whatsoever. But we're going to back up, cleaned up, put back in again, and then we might have some workable brakes. But they are going to need some future. Right, we're both brake calipers back installed again, the sliders and pads greased back in, and then we hit back up, we got the pressure bleeder ready to go, uh, brake clean and blue roll on standby of course, because I don't trust the thing, it's screwed me over a few times before, but up to 15 psi, so we'll go around, now, I've already pretty much gravity fed that caliper whilst uh, the other caliper has been rebuilt, the pick of the one, so it's mainly this one here that needs to bleed in. Um, not sure if you can tell on camera here or not. We'll turn the light down maybe. In. There's a bit of air in there yet, you should be able to see that. So hopefully now if we crack it off with a pressure bleeder, you should see the air vanish. Well, move at least, not vanish. Yeah. I'm not sure someone will flow in this thing because it, it's very directly. Doesn't want to move anything very fast at all. But it is coming out and going there. So I'm going to keep bleeding it like this until all the air comes out of the calipers. Um, sometimes it pays to give them a little tap as well just to see if there's any more air in them. Sometimes it's more on at least the VWs where you've got the bleed nipple might not be at the best place on some of the Lucas calipers. Um, but we've still got some air coming out there now, so we'll leave that be. I might get another bottle set up on the other side here. So we can do the same over this side. And just make sure we've got no air in the system. Then it should all be good, hopefully, he says. Okay, well, roll on the next weekend. Um, so, I did take the calipers for a quick drive, well, as far back as the golf and board again. Um, they worked and then got to the last point and the brake pedal fell to the floor. <sighs> so, notice that there was fluid pissing out of this caliper here, so obviously one of the seals inside, a nap pissed in there, is gone. So, as I said before, and it's not ideal trying to rebuild brake calipers without seals, and it actually turns out I think these are um, M16 calipers. So, in which case, if it's still been converted or it's what is fitted to standard, M16 is sort of the the main caliper fitted to Capri's, some escorts and stuff like that, so really easy to find, I've got, got another pair on the shelf and I've been dropped off another pair by the owner, so what I'm going to do is rather than piss around and rebuild these for now, we're just going to fit another pair of working calipers, well I'll find out if they work in a minute, fit another pair of them and then go from there really for now and then probably rebuild these in the future or something like that, uh, and then have a spare set kicking around. Bagger, um, it's annoying these things happen so we'll just crack on and get it sorted anyway I'll see you shortly when that's fitted then okay so I see brakes currently working which is a massive success um, and a bit of weight off my shoulder now it's a pain in the ass um, sure we couldn't change the calipers in the first place would have saved so much time but oh well um, so as you can see by the mess here at the minute I've just been flushing the cooling system again so it's had the last few weeks some um, additive in it to help clean it um, and I keep getting more and more crap out of it to be fair. I think I've got most of it now There's still gonna be some in there, but you got all this sludge now. It's either from a previous Head gasket issue a Current small head gasket issue. Um, there did seem to be almost what looked like some kind of ceiling in the system already So it could be a small head gasket issue with that um, or it could be where someone's mixed antifreezes over time so they've mixed maybe blue and pink or something to just chuck it in there and obviously they're not compatible when they turn into sludge it's very it's a very odd sludge it's almost like gooey and slimy um kind of oily but not the usual sort of mayonnaise you'd get when you sort of mix oil and water in the head of tank it's just been sitting at the bottom of the radiator so the only way i've actually got it out is by running the engine uh getting out of temperature and then pumping water down into radiators to have it overflowing and this is what's come out when it's been overflowing uh so that's all it's worked so far doing that but I've cleaned it out a fair bit now. Um, I don't think I can get much more water out of the system now. We'll clean it. So we're going to put in five litres of red antifreeze. Um, we'll have blue to start with, but I'm going to put red in for a longer life. Um, it's just better. 
So yeah, we'll do that a second. Well, that's the um, antifreeze put in, and the cooling system flush as much as I can get it reasonably flushed. That's all sorted. I had tested brakes down the lane, and they do appear to work, so that's definitely a bonus. Um, so now we are sort of on the finishing up bits, really. Uh, so next on the list is going to be oil. So we'll get that one drained in a minute. Um, I'm secretly hoping that someone's used the wrong grade of oil because the oil pressure at idle is a bit low. Uh, from cold, it's absolutely fine. From idle, it's not great. So with any luck, someone's used something like a 1040 or a more modern oil on it when it should be a 2050. So let's just drain this oil in it and see. Well, you won't see much from here, but put new stuff in and see if our oil pressure once up to temperature on idle is decent. Ah. This oil was quite clean, I think. Oh, God. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Ah, oh, shit. All over myself. Oh, no. oh God. <sighs> Damn it. Now I'm covered in oil. Alright, I'll be back in a second, okay? <laughs> Okay, so crisis averted. Um, I've cleaned all the oil off myself, sorted the floor out. Oil foot has been removed, and to be fair, the old oil was like piss water. You see, I think this, that's the word for it. Um, it was very, very thin. So, my suspicions on someone putting the wrong oil in could well be correct on this case. Um, we've put in dinosaur oil, which is the old 2050 mineral, which is what this engine is meant to have. Same as the old Pintos and such, um, just something thick, simple, and they quite like that. I guess we'll turn it over, see if we've got the right amount in there. And then hopefully, on idle, when warm, the pressure's going to be higher. Let's have a peek and see. There you go. Oh, there we go, in quite a lot better state than when she first came here. Not too shabby. Could be a lot better, but could be a lot worse, so yeah, I'm mapping off of that. And we've also got better oil pressure on idle now, so we're for thicker oil, so that's perfect. I think now, for the old girl left, is I've got to, I keep forgetting to, I best do it now actually, is sort out some kind of blanking plug for this uh, air pump thingy, Uh input to the manifolds because they're going to stay for now until the exhaust plates get hold of it and then if they remove the manifolds they can remove that because if the studs snap off and that when I try to remove it, it's going to be an absolute nightmare and there's no actual reason other than aesthetically for it to go at the minute. So I think I'll leave that to them when they're equipped and potentially make a new manifold to it anyway. So I've got to blank off that, get the bonnet back on, and I think then that could be a series almost over for now anyway. Um, yeah, so I'll crack on for a minute, and there'll probably one more episode after this, and then that'll be about it. Yeah, actually, I might just end it here. Yeah, screw it, we'll end it here. Um, make one more episode and then we'll be good. So if you happen to have enjoyed this series so far um, and want to see more series like this, uh, we'll see what other projects. I've got the, my twin turbo Capri, I've got the Turbo Technics Range Rover now, and we've got the 20 valve turbo Mark II Golf, and a, well I think the Shrocker might end up on the channel as well, we having the 20 valve turbo conversion, so plenty more to come. If you happen to enjoy this and want to see more or see other projects then why not like the video, comment, tell me what you think, and subscribe to see the next lot. I've been Jordan, and I'll see you again next time.